Tonight, we want to talk about where is the lamb. And I want to go quickly to Genesis chapter 22. Now, so last night we got to know that when you, when you accept the grace of God, two things happen to you. There is a transformation in your life. That is one which you talked about the first part. And the second part is that God gives you the power, the key. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, I would what? Do it. And we know we spend some time on the name of God. He followed from verse 15 in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandment. And we saw all the blessings that come from keeping the commandments of God. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. I will do it. You know, it is not that tagline, in Jesus' name I pray. No. It is understanding who or what the name of God is. And we realize that the commandments are the transcript of God's character. For me to know how you performed in your previous university, all I do is to request for what? Your transcript. And I can see what you did. And that's why I tell some kids when your parents say, you know, when I was your age, I had all age. I said, Dad, can I go and check for your transcript? And God says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. So that what? You remember the motivation? That my father may be what? Glorified. And that's what I love so much. Not because you're such a righteous person. Not not because you're such a sinless person. But the grace is made abundant for you. And that's why I love some places in the scripture that says, for his own name's sake. Not because of you. But he treasures his name. So he winks and f- over your shortcomings and forgives you. Tonight, what happens is that when, when you accept the grace of God, it doesn't mean that your troubles are over. But the Lord will always be with you every step of the way. And that's why I want to share with you Genesis chapter 22. And uh, somebody says, his, from verse 1, from verse 1, somebody says, his favorite Bible verse is, and it came to pass. That's the favorite Bible verse. Because whatever the condition may be, it came to pass. So even if you are at the breaking point of your life, for my friends who are coming just today, the break, beyond the breaking point has been our theme throughout this week. It came to pass. The pain, the sorrow, the tear, the fear, the disappointment, the guilt, all of that, the struggles, it came to pass. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Of course, this is old English. God did test. We saw that on Saturday afternoon, Job chapter 23, remember verse 8 to 10. He said, and when he has tested me, I shall come forth as what? Gold. So God did tempt, but God did test. That is the contemporary meaning of this, Abraham. What did God say? And he said, so so God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. You know, To change your situation, you should be able to change your position. When God calls you, you should hear the voice of God. There's a lot of noise around today. A lot of noise. Internal noise, external noise, noise everywhere. Television, radio, everywhere, the media. Internally, we have noise that struggle, that we struggle with. But once in a while, we need to be able to tune off from all of these noises and focus and meditate. Uh, Normally when we come to Christians, we talk about meditation. Many Christians do not know what it is. But if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Worry is focusing on the negative things that scare you. And most of the time... Worry is a thing that you don't have solutions to. Meditation is focusing on the promises and the word of God. There is hope beyond the breaking point. 
So God called Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. What? God didn't mean worse. Take now thy son, thy only son. So God was crystal clear. The instruction was clear, simple, straightforward. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Now, you know that this is not easy because Abraham has waited for almost a hundred years. Waiting for one promise from God. Talk about beyond, beyond the breaking point. Waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Sarah was almost 90. And the one day they saw some three strangers and they invited them. Come, come and eat. Listen, there's, there's blessing in being generous and kind. Not only to the people who return, who return kindness to you. But people who may not be able to return that generosity. The Bible, Hebrew makes us to understand that in so doing, we minister to what? Angels. Kindness. Oh, haven't you met just some mean people before? Don't be like them. Kindness. So, so, so you can imagine in the village square, I would just want, to, want you to, to imagine a little bit. Like it used to happen. And, and Abraham walks around the village square and, 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 and talking, greeting his men. Maybe they're playing the, a draft or some game under the, the tree at the village square. And you can hear one of those men say, oh, come on, man. When we men are talking, you two, you want to talk? Of all the wealth you have, who is going to inherit this? You, you just heard that Kate is... Pregnant again, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Third one is on the way. And you and I will be paying. What a life. I like to be born into a family like that, right? No worry. Just give birth and we will take care of them for you. And no offense, if you are from the royal family, you are here. You're welcome. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> You have a good life. I, I remember going on, going on some uh, tour at Windsor Castle. Oh, my goodness. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of history. And most of the history is taken from the Caribbean, from Africa, from, from Asia. Yeah. You've done a good job. <laughs> we have, haven't we? But, but here we are, almost 90, and Sarah had no one. And, and, and Abraham had no, no you know, they didn't have any child. And imagine the pain, the pain for a wife to go to her husband and say, you know what, at this age we've gone past and beyond. So I think you, you, you better marry my, 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 my housekeeper. How many, how many women of God here would like to do something like that? That would be real tough. So, so for, for a wife to, to, to go to her husband and say that, you can imagine the pain, the ridicule, the gossip that she had to put up with. The joke. You can imagine it. And I like the way the Nigerians do it, right? The Nigerians do it very well. They know how to demonstrate it. So, so, so when you're walking, the, the, the old lady is walking through the, the village, they say, witch. Witch, you don't chop all your picking for your belly. That means you... You've eaten all your children in your womb. Which? All the things your, your husband, all the money where your husband gets, what do you go use them for? Which? Which or oh, which? <laughs> and, and, and you can imagine, you can imagine the pain. You can imagine 
imagine the pain. And you can imagine Abraham coming around and saying, hey, what's up, man? How you guys doing? Oh, keep quiet, man. When we men are talking, you want to talk? Uh, where's my son, number 350? You know, those days, there was nothing like family planning. And, and so the wealth of a man was seen in the number of kids they had. That's why whole chapters, so you, and this person begat this, and that person begat that, and the total number of this was 48. So, so if you, the more children you had, the wealthier you're known to be. Because there was no university. They all go to the field and take care of the sheep. And you could have more. So you can imagine the pain. Sarah and her husband couldn't wait any longer. So they wanted to help God to fast track the promise. They have, they have been singing, standing on the promises of Christ for so long a time. But now, they, standing, still standing? They just couldn't do it. But it's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word and just to, to rest upon his promise and just to know thus said the Lord. So, so I, in my imagination, forgive me, uh, imagination one day Sarah wakes up and Sarah is not feeling very well. You know, meanwhile, the angels promised her that in a year's time, oh, they laughed, she laughed. Look at me, man. But one day, not too long afterwards, I imagine Sarah feeling so unwell and, and, and restless. And why, do you have malaria? What's going on, sweetheart? I don't know. I just feel like throwing up. Is it food poison? No, I can't tell. I've, I've tried everything, you know. Maybe you should get some trasilicate or something, you know, to take care of, of the stomach. Okay, you know what? I think I need to go and see the GP. If there was one at that time, you know? And, and, and then Sarah, Sarah goes to see the GP and then, the, uh, you know, some of these doctors, especially the older ones, they say, okay, can I see your palm? Mm. Mm. Can I see your eye? Mm. Um. You know, you, you, you see, there was no reason to ask Sarah at that time, when was the last time you had your, because, hey, we're talking about somebody who's almost 90. Why would you want to ask an old lady such a question? She gone past all of that. Is somebody following me? So, so the doctor didn't need to ask all these questions. Okay, you know what? I think we need to run a few tests and see. Uh, we need to, okay, can you see the lab technician? Uh, let's just go to the lab and run a few tests for you and see. And imagine the, the test coming and then, uh, uh, Mrs. Sarah Abraham? Sarah Abraham? Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, your test has come and... Uh, no. No, the, no, no, no. This can't be... Uh, how old are you again? Come on, you're my GP. You have all my history. Why are you asking how am I again? I'm almost, almost 90. No, um, you know what? We have to run this test again. Just to be very sure. Well, I'm just using a contemporary imagination, Right? Well, <coughs> Mrs. Abraham, your test just came back and it, 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 according to, no, he doesn't want to take responsibility. According to the result, from the result we've gotten, you're pregnant. What? I am? I, are you serious? And just takes the result. And I imagine this old lady going home and, and, and says, sweetheart, <laughs> oh, guess what? Guess what? Why, you gone? Your sickness is gone? You, know, you don't have malaria? No, you better guess. Why, we have more sheep added to our fold <laughs> for the sheep? <laughs> no, no, no. Guess what? You're going to be daddy. What do you mean? I've, I have Ishmael now. No, no, no. I've, I've always known now that I can be a daddy. No, no. you mean uh, she's pregnant again? No, myself. Really? And again, when I get to this part of this story, my mind goes back to the Nigerians. 
They do it so well because when that good news breaks, that old lady will start dancing, you know. They start dancing. And, and, and this is the song they do. I have a very big God. Oh. He's always by my side. I have a very big God oh, by my side. And you see that old lady will start dancing in the whole village. That's the first thing they by my side, by my side, by my side, by my side. I have a very big God. Oh. He's always by my side. I have a very big God oh, by my side. Yes, we sure do have a very big God. And he's always by our side. Even when we feel we are, we are at the breaking point of our lives. When the promise doesn't make sense any longer. When the word of the Lord doesn't make sense any longer. When the voice of God, you don't hear it any longer. Remember last Saturday afternoon, Job says, look, I go forward, he's not there. I go back, he's not there. I turn left and right, God is not there. And it happens to each and every one of us. And that is faith. The only thing that can keep you going in times of God's silence is faith. That's it. That's the only thing. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. If only we can have faith like a mustard seed. So now you can imagine after 90 years now and after 100 years, these two old folks, you can imagine Sarah walking in the village and this same village gossip say, ah, what did they do, mama? What is happening to mama? What did they happen to mama? What did they happen to mama? This witch. I hear something for the village. I hear say, mama don't take Beleo. No, you know. And then, and then you can hear, say, can, can, can my grandchild, can he help your old pregnant lady to sit here a little bit? <gasps> Did you hear that? She's pregnant. She says she's pregnant. Can you imagine this? And then finally, the promised child is born. And then God keeps silent for some years. And then suddenly we hear the voice of God calling Abraham. Probably Abraham might be thinking, well, I have another promise for you. But in, Gen in, in, in Exodus chapter 22, what we hear, I mean, what we just read, what we hear is not, Genesis 22, is not another promise, but God is taking that which Abraham has waited for all his life. All he has desired and, de and desperately wanted. Now it appears God wants to take this from him. Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Take him to the Mount Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. We don't see anything that's been written of what the thought that was going on because we couldn't have carried this Bible but it is fair to think that it wasn't easy for Abraham. But the Bible makes us understand that Abraham woke up early in the morning, got ready and called his servant, and they set off down the road to go to the place which God had told them. But one writer tells us that that journey, that three-day journey, Abraham was struggling and the enemy was taunting and tormenting him. Are you sure God is going to do it? In, in fact, Abraham, are you sure you heard the voice of God? What did you eat before going to bed last night? Abraham, are you not the same man who has been telling and preaching in this village that thou shalt not kill? That your God said we shouldn't kill? By the way, did you even tell your wife what you're going to do with her only son? Did you? Did you, tell, did, you, did you tell him, are you sure it is God who is telling you to go and do this? Uh, is, it, is it not possible that this is all your own human inclination? Are you not hallucinating? Are you not hearing voices? Three days on this road. Three days the devil kept tormenting him. Three days he kept wrestling with himself. Three days. But in all of this, I believe Abraham said all the way my Savior leads me. 
What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me. All the way through the thick and the thing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. All the way. Whether my prayers are answered yet or not. All the way, whether my sorrows are gone or not. All the way, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. And Abraham was focused. Determined. Stubborn faith like none other. Probably he was saying, I'm pressing on the upward where new heights I'm gaining every day and still praying as I onward bound. Lord, please, Lord, plant my feet on a higher ground because this, this journey is tough. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Help me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn. I can't bear these burdens any longer. But is there something too big? Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. Your only son. God knows how important that is for you. God knows how important that job is for you. But he said, remember the Sabbath. He knows. But would you be able to have such faith like this. The Bible tells us in chapter verse 4 or Genesis 22 that on the third day, Abraham lifted up his, head, his eyes. Three days journey, no conversation, no dialogue was registered. But on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. I am very sure his heart missed beats. But he kept his composure. I saw one weary, sad, and torn, but with eager steps. He pressed on the way, and I asked, what boy his spirit up? as all oh, this, the blessed hope. It takes only faith in the blessed hope of God, of God's power and God's soon return to keep, to keep pressing on such road. Third day, there the place was. I am sure by that time his BP went off the roof. That's the place he was supposed to sacrifice his son. And Abraham said to his young men, wait here. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Statement of faith. And Abraham took the wood. Of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. No comment. But I think of, uh, all along this road, this young man who has been brought up in the fear of the Lord, this young man who has been trained to fall in love with God and to be obedient to God himself, this young man who's, who, who, was in, who is not left at home and say, wait, in the home I'm going to church. The father always went to worship God with him. The father always went to perform sacrifices. Notice something was wrong. The object of sacrifice was missing. Something was missing. So verse 7, and Isaac spake unto, his, unto Abraham his father. And for the first time we see this dialogue. And we see the bond, the closeness between the two of them. My father. You see the affection here. And he said, here am I my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for burnt offering? Where is the lamb? Anytime I go to perform sacrifice with you, I know we'll always carry a sacrificial lamb. Today, we are going for three days. I can't see the lamb. Where is the lamb? Oh, some of us are still asking this. 
our object of expectation. If only I can marry this woman, I will be happy. 10, 15 years, you're still asking, where is the lamb? Where is that promised expectation? If I can get this job, I will be happy. You've been there for a couple of years and you're still looking for that promised fulfillment. Where is the lamb? Oh yes, there are some of you, like myself, some of us think that if only I, I become a faithful follower of God, I'll have no problem. And that is what a lot of churches are preaching. Once you become a child of God, everything must be easygoing. Life become like a bed of roses. Well, I have news for you. The moment you become a friend of God, you become an enemy of the enemy. And sometimes he will bring trials. If it doesn't come from work, it's become from your children or from your spouse or your neighbor or your health or some finances or some something will come. Where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? Some folks coming to the UK thought that the UK was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. Only to get here and they realized that they left the milk and honey where they were coming from. And they're still here and thinking and asking where is the lamb. The unfortunate thing, the folks back home thinking that you're still swimming in milk and honey over here. And if you tell them that, you know what, I think I left the milk and honey where you are, they don't believe you. Where is the lamb? Where is the lamb? And this question kept ringing. And then Abraham said, and Abraham said, my son, please take note of this. My son, God will provide himself. Did you hear that? God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And finally, keep this in mind. I, Abraham responds, God will provide Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. It may be, it may be, it may be healing, maybe some good news from the doctor. But when, when you got the phone call today, it wasn't good at the other end. But I still tell you, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. Just have faith in him. Maybe it's a marriage that's not going well. Maybe some loneliness or some illness that you're going through. Maybe some mental health struggles that you have. Tonight, I still tell you, if this is all you take home tonight, let it be God will provide Jehovah Jireh. It may take 100 years. Even if he's four days late, he's still on time. God will provide your children are going wayward. You've done everything. You've prayed. You've done. Listen, let me tell you what. God will provide. Only trust in him. Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. But if you love him, keep his commandment. And you'll be empowered. And so they finally got to the place. And the fire, the, 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 the sacrificial altar was laid. And, 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 and this, I'm imagining, you know, those days when my dad was alive, anytime my dad would say, you know, Greg, you know daddy loves you, right? I know whatever follows after is not good news. Anytime my dad would say, Greg, you know daddy loves you. And anytime my dad starts becoming all loving, you know daddy loves you, don't you? My next question, daddy, what's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem? Because I know what is going to follow may not be. I feel that he, he was just laying the grounds for the breaking news. I'm imagining Abraham now. Everything is being ready. The wood, the fire, everything is set. And now at this point, I imagine Abraham said, son, you know that he loves you. Yes. Remember the question you asked me a while ago about the lamb? I'm sorry, son. But Yahweh, you and I, our Father in heaven said today, you shall be the lamb. Really? Bring it to today, England. 
Oh yeah? Dad, you want to kill me? Come over. You, you, you want to kill me? You want, you, so you, you, you brought me here. You, you deceived me and brought me here to kill me? Okay, now you stand there. I'm going to take some selfies. And what's the, what, what's the, what's the emergency number? Is it 999? Yes. 999, yes, yes, what's that? Yes, listen, my, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking. I'm not in town. I'm somewhere in the bush on the hill. Somewhere, you know, my dad just lied to me. He brought me here and dad want to kill me. We're talking about a young grown teenager. <laughs> so where are you located? Listen, I can't give you any address. I just know that we're in the bush somewhere. There's a place called Mariah on one of the hills. That young man will not even wait. He will run. But this young man who feared God as well, if, if this is what the Lord is asking for, it must be the most difficult thing for me to, live, to be killed for sacrifice. I'm going to surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. Can you do that? Like Abraham, like Isaac, to lay down your life? And that is what Christianity is all about. To surrender completely. One of the most difficult things Christian can ever do is surrendering. To surrender to God. To lay down your life as a living sacrifice. Now, a living sacrifice is different from a dead sacrifice because this living sacrifice can get off the altar and go away. Offer yourself as what? Living sacrifice. In other words, yes, you are not like a lamb that has been tied down. You chose to surrender yourself. Every living sacrifice is, before sacrifice, is willful. I'm talking about human sacrifice. And I'm not talking about where a throat is slitted or all that. But you willfully saying that I give up of all the worldly things that I do. Jesus, all to Jesus. All I am and have and ever want to be. All of my aspirations, hopes, and plans, I give them to you. All of my yesterday, today, and the future, I surrender them to you. All of my joy and happiness and frustrations, I surrender them to you. My, my project, everything. Jesus, all to Jesus. We sing this song, all to Jesus, I surrender. Trust me, it's not as easy as we sing it. Dad, here I am. Imagine Abraham tying the hand of his son and probably putting the son on the, on, the, on the wood. His hands probably shaking, his heart beating ten times more than usual. He looks up again, tears cloud his eyes and whispers prayer for the last time. His, his voice becomes shaky and hoarse and he couldn't just stand still. His hands were all shaking. He takes the knife and looks up to God. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I'm imagining it, the Lord, God, this is so hard. This is so difficult. This is so hard. How can I just do this to the only promised child that I have? The Lord wants it. The Lord is asking for it. My time, my talent, my temple, my treasure, my everything. The Lord wants it. That which I cherish, the things that I cherish most. God says, surrender to me. Trust me. Follow me. I will never leave you nor forsake you. But this one is too hard. And finally, I imagine Abraham takes the knife, puts one hand on the eyes of the sun, then ready placed the knife down the throat of his son, ready to press down to go back and forth. And just at that nick of time, the voice goes out, Abraham, Abraham, drop that knife. Do not hurt your son. For now I know that truly you fear the Lord. Wow. Jehovah Jireh. So sometimes God allowed tests and trials to help us grow. Can you still trust him? Is there something you think he's asking of you that is too much to give? And Abraham stretched forth his hand, verse 10, stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out of heaven, hallelujah, someone, and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. 
And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do you any do, do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught. God has provided himself, what? A lamb for the offering. When you read on all the blessings that were pronounced upon Abraham are there. But let me tell you something. When Isaac asks, where is the lamb? All through, all through the scriptures from Genesis, there were attempts to answer that question. Where is the lamb? Genesis mentions it and says it's the, it's, it's, it's the seed of the woman that will do what? Crush the head of the serpent. We come through, all through, almost every scripture in the Bible makes references to that answer, makes an attempt. Isaiah gets so close and mentions the name. He will be Emmanuel, the everlasting father, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace. He mentions all the name, but that was not answered until one day in John chapter 1 when John the, the, John the Baptist was baptizing at Bethabara at Jordan he plunged somebody into the water lifted up his head and was going to baptize and he lifted up his head in John chapter 1 verse 29 that was the first time of, after over 400 years the Bible said the next day John see a Jesus coming unto him and when he less lifted up his head, he saw that, behold, so Isaac asked the question, where is the lamb? And for the first time, that question was answered directly. Where is the lamb? And we get the answer, behold, the lamb of God, we take it away, the sin of the world. Would you say amen out here? Amen. Look at how long the promise had taken. Where is the lamb? Behold the Lamb of God. No matter how long it takes, your answer will come. Behold the Lamb of God. And by the way, biblical historians will tell you the same area called Moriah, the name changed later to what? Golgotha. The same neighborhood, 400 or hundreds, a few hundred of years later, the same Moriah region, the name was changed, that hill area, the name was changed to what? Golgotha. Now what happened at Golgotha? What happened there? That was when Jesus, that was when Jesus was hanging on the cross that Friday afternoon. On the cross and he declared, it is finished hallelujah someone that same hour the priest didn't need to slaughter that innocent lamb in the temple any longer because the true lamb of God who takes away the sin of this earth was hanging on the cross and he says all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb power to overcome your fears Power, because he's meeting you at the breaking point. Power, when you are going down, he's there with you. Power, when you are in the valley of the shadow of death, he's there with you. Power, when you've gotten that disappointing letter. Power, to, for you to have hope, even at the breaking point of your life. Power. So you see, while we have written or spoken prophecy, we also have what? prophecy so everything that was going on between Abraham and his son was prophecy that was being what acted prophecy that was being rolled out let me show you Genesis 22 from verse 1 what did he say I mean from verse 2 he said take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest where do we find this for God so love the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son. God will never ask you of you anything that he has never gone through before. It was an acted prophecy. It was prophecy that was being acted. 
Tonight, is there anything too hard to give to the Lord? And that's what Romans says, what shall, se- what, what shall do what? Separate me from the love of God. What? What can separate me from the love of God? Relationship? Marriage? Money? Health? Job? Position? Power? Education? Fame? What? Can separate me from the love of God? Jehovah Jireh. And Jesus insisted that John should baptize him because he said, we must do this to fulfill all righteousness. And you know what happened? When John baptized the true Lamb of God, something happened. We'll be talking about it one of this night very soon. Something happened. The Bible says that what? Heaven, when Jesus stepped out of the water, what happened? Heaven opened. When you decide to follow Jesus and to keep all his commandments and receive his grace, one, your life begins to transform. Two, you are given the key that whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. But something more also happens. When you take the next step of faith and say, I publicly declare my faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. None of this world delusive dreams. I've denied all sinful pleasures. Jesus is mine. Nothing between. And I'm prepared to let the world know that Jesus is my friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a, gr- what a privilege it is to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. What a privilege it is. He gives you power. And Jesus stepped out. When Jesus stepped out of the water, something happened. The Bible tells us that what happened? Heaven opened. And then what happened again? The spirit of the Lord descended upon Jesus in the form of what? A dove. Why why a dove? A peaceful, harmless bird. Why not an eagle? Wild and strong. Why not an ostrich? The biggest bird on earth. Why not a hawk? Why not a crow? Why not one of these birds? Why the peaceful, gentle? You see, we are made to believe that when the Holy Spirit comes, you must fall. You must gyrate. When somebody touches you, you must fall and roll. Sometimes he speaks with a still small voice. You see, you don't have to tell everybody that I am. Do you know who I am for people to know who you are? Still small voice. So the Holy Spirit descended. When you take that step and get baptized, the Holy Spirit descends on you. You receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And then God, when heaven opened, you know what it is for heaven to open for you? Last night we learned that God said he will manifest himself to you, isn't it? You will see God face to face. You see God in his glory. The power of God will be upon you. And then guess what? Heaven opens. I don't know how you call your treasury here, but imagine where all the money of England is printed. And then they said, Sister Pastor Pickett, you the door is open for you. Whatsoever you need, whatsoever you ask, I'm sure you ask Sean and all the others to follow you. Church, we need to expand. Anybody has a pickup truck here? Let's go. Let's, let's go and load them all in. The door is open for you. Heaven will open for you. And when you mention, you call God, even the weakest voice resounds in the throne room of God in heaven. Because now you have a direct access to the throne room of God. Heaven is open for you. And the voice of the Lord came where God spoke from heaven and said what? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That is a universal declaration. This is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. That is a declaration, a statement of approval to the whole world. A welcome statement into the kingdom and the fold of God. Lucifer, she's not yours anymore. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. It's also a warning to the kingdom of the enemy. Back off. It doesn't, I don't care what she's done in the past. I don't care what she did even this morning. 
She's mine now. It is an endorsement. It's a vote of confidence. And now, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to receive that power. Even if it means I should do this over and over again. Because there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Is there someone sitting by you? Is there somebody sitting close to you? If you don't know the name of the person, can you ask? Because I want you to pray for that person. I want you to pray for that person. Is there somebody sitting close by you? If there's nobody sitting close by you, it means you're sitting alone. Just get a name. If you're around you, get a name because I want you to pray for that person in the next uh, one minute. In the next one minute. Can we bow in our heads, please? So you may ask for the name of that person and then you pray for that person. If you want to share something with the person to pray for you, you can. All right? You can. But when the person is sharing with you, keep it. It's between you and God. It doesn't go anywhere else. Amen? Amen? Pray for that person. But I'll tell you what to pray about. But if that person wants to share something with you to pray about, then don't just tell the person I'll pray for you. Do pray for that person here and after here. Amen? Let's bend on our heads. Let's bend on our heads. I, I didn't say pray with. I said pray for. So you can pray alone. All right? You can pray alone. But just want you to pray for that person. Is that good? Yes, because there are people who are learning how to pray. Don't put them, don't embarrass them. Number one, ask that the Lord will bless this person. Ask the Lord to bless this person. Ask the Lord to reveal himself to this person. And if this person is going through some trials, if the person is going through some trial, if they've shared with you, silently mention it before God. Ask the Lord that this person will, the faith of this person will be increased and that person will trust in God so much. If this person is struggling with doubt or anything about God, that this person will respond, will respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. That if they're struggling with anything in their lives, if they're struggling with anything in their life, if there's something they must let go, but they can't let go, ask that God will give them the power, the power, to trust in him. And if this person needs to surrender and, and, and surrender something to God, either themselves to God, and receive that power from God, that that person will not hold on to it. But they will open up their heart and surrender to him. And maybe tonight you're here you heard my voice. You've decided to follow Jesus. And maybe you desire to give your life to Jesus Christ and you want a visit at home. You can wave your hand wherever you are. Somebody will slip a card into your hand, right? You, you, want, you desire to follow Jesus Christ and be his friend and walk with him for the rest of your life and depend on his power. While our heads are still bad and we're praying, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to keep praying. You just wave your hand at a corner and somebody will put this in your hand. Or you're going through some pressing problems and you need the pastor or the church leaders to visit you. There's a hand there. There's a hand at the back there. Elder, can you please slip this into my sister's hand? Thank you. Is there somebody else? And I needed to have given you a few copies. Let me also say this, that if you desire baptism, that you may receive the power of God, like it did even with Jesus, would you wave your hand? If you're sitting here, or would you wave your hand? You desire baptism. You haven't been baptized by immersion, but you want to take advantage of the plan made by the church and be baptized and start a fresh life with God. Would you wave your hand? We'll give you this card while we are still praying. Is there somebody here like that? You desire to get baptized. 
and start a new life with Christ. Is there someone here like that? Is there someone here like that? Would you like to have one? Don't be shy. Edda, please come to my right hand side. Don't be shy. We're praying. We're still praying. And I'm going to offer the closing prayer very soon. I see a night there. Yes, Edda. See there. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? We're going to be praying for you. Is there anybody else? I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Can we all... Can we all, let me add this. Maybe you feel that you're discouraged and need prayers for stronger faith in Christ. We talked about faith tonight. Would you rise? Maybe your, your challenge is that you want a stronger faith in Christ. Would you rise as we pray? You need a stronger faith in Christ. You say, Lord, I want to have a faith like Abraham. I want to have a faith like, like Isaac. I want to have a faith like Isaac. Lord, please help me. Let us bow down our heads as we pray. Bow down our heads as we pray. Tonight, Father, we have heard your word. We have heard your voice. And we are trusting in you. Many are going through trials and tribulations. But as you, through Abraham, said to your servant, God will provide. I pray that tonight you will increase our faith in you. Every one of us standing on our feet, Lord, increase our faith in you. Lord, we are asking that those who are going through some pressing problems, that you will reach out to them and touch them. And those who are considering baptizing and starting a new life with you, Jesus, reach out to them. And, and when they step into that water, Lord, prove to them like you did to me. That yes, you will never leave them nor forsake them. Glorify yourself, dear Father. Glorify yourself tonight. Hear the prayers, the weak, sinful prayers of your children. Lord, please hear their prayers and their cry. And bless each and every one of us. And like Abraham, may we see your glory and your miracle at the end of it all. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you for hearing us. Take out all of us home tonight safely and bring us back here tomorrow night as we hear another message that gives us hope even at the breaking points of our lives. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Please, let's be seated. For those of our friends who may be watching online, if you, I'm sure that on the same website, if you want to send a message, you can send an email. There's a phone number there. You can call. You can send an email to the church, and we to be promptly re uh, responded to. And then if you are here, and maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you still want one of these, one of these, or you want to see me and talk with me, I'll make a few time to talk with you. May the Lord bless you indeed and have a good night.